let's talk about what a Tesla Gigafactory actually does. Obviously, the surface level answer is that it makes cars. Yes, we all know that. But there are many ways to make a car. And the path that Tesla is choosing to take with their particular manufacturing process is obviously working out for them on a much higher level than the paths taken by their competition. But what is it that sets Tesla apart? How do they continue to accelerate while their peers crumble under the weight of simply manufacturing their product? I'm going to propose that the secret is in Tesla's process and not their product. And we'll get into some reasons why Tesla's greatest invention is not the Model S Plaid or the 4680 cell or even full self-driving, but the actual Gigafactory itself. We can simply look at the numbers to see the story of Tesla's success. In the first quarter of 2022, the company again set a record for highest number of vehicles delivered, now reaching over 310,000 cars. That's a 69% increase over the number of vehicles they delivered over the same time period in 2021. And Tesla has done this at the same time that every other automaker on the planet is seeing their productivity drop. In the United States, new vehicle sales are down 12% overall, fueled by a significant drop in productivity from the country's largest domestic automakers. GM saw a 20% drop in vehicle deliveries compared to this time last year, and that extends to international automakers as well. Nissan down 30%, Honda down 23%. So it's no secret that Tesla has something special that sets them apart in terms of being able to get a product into their customer's driveway. And we know it's definitely not the product itself. Electric vehicles have proven themselves to be spectacularly difficult to manufacture. Just look at the competition. Lucid and Rivian burst out of the gates in 2021 as American startups with genuinely amazing products that in some ways even put Tesla's vehicles to shame. However, both of these companies very quickly faltered when it came to product manufacturing. On February 28th, Lucid had to announce to their shareholders that they had only managed to deliver 300 copies of the Airdream edition to customers in the time since the vehicle officially rolled out on October 30th, 2021. That's less than 100 deliveries per month. This prompted the company to reduce their production estimates for 2022 down from 20,000 cars to just 12,000 cars. Similar story over at Rivian. While they were able to achieve higher production numbers, by mid-March, the company said they had built about 1,500 vehicles so far in 2022, they are still falling drastically short of expectations, having to inform shareholders that their delivery predictions for 2022 are now cut down by half to just 25,000 electric trucks and SUVs. Now, I hear what you're saying. Those are brand new companies, not a fair comparison. And that is true. So let's draw some lines against the most established of establishment dinosaur companies, Ford Motors. Ford does actually make a reasonable amount of electric cars. In February, the company revealed that they'd sold 2,370 Mustang Mach-E's in January of 2022, and that in their most successful month, February 2021, the company got 3,739 units into customer driveways. So Ford definitely can wield a higher production rate than a startup like Rivian with their 100 year head start. But it's still not a massive number of cars, and it's nowhere near the demand level for the Mach-E, which is currently hitting prospective buyers with a wait time of about 20 to 30 weeks, or maybe more. So hopefully that brings to light my point that it doesn't matter if you're the new hotness or old as shit, making electric cars at high volumes is a very difficult thing to do. So why can Tesla do it so well? Like most people, getting a good night's sleep is really important to me, which is why we're excited to work with Birch Living again. Birch is a premium mattress in a box company that makes mattresses and sleep products that are stylish, comfortable, and environmentally conscious. 
Their non-toxic mattresses are made in America and are crafted with organic and natural materials that have been sustainably sourced. If you watched the last video, you saw me surprise my mom with the Birch Lux mattress after using the same mattress for 30 years. And I'm happy to update you on her experience. She's absolutely loving it and has been sleeping better ever since. With your Birch mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial along with a 25 year warranty. And each Birch Lux mattress comes with two of their Eco Rest pillows made from recycled plastic bottles that are breathable and better for the environment. The best part about all of this is that Birch delivers your mattress right to your door for free within the US. It comes rolled up in a box and is super easy to set up yourself. Crafted with eight different layers of organic cashmere, organic wool, organic cotton, and 100% natural latex, the mattress is specially created with breathability, cooling, and support in mind, and offers increased airflow and targeted zoned lumbar support. My mom loves her Birch Lux mattress, and I think you would too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Birch. You can click the link below or go to birchliving.com slash teslaspace for $400 off your mattress, plus two free pillows delivered right to your door for free within the US. And now let's get back to the video. A lot of this success just has to do with the way Elon Musk thinks. He often talks about this mental strategy called first principles. It's basically the idea that you start every new project from scratch and build from the roots. The basic fundamentals of the project inform every decision. That sounds obvious, but it's not often the way that people approach things. We rely on the common knowledge, the things that are just known to be true, even if we don't know why, or we reason by analogy, essentially taking what someone else is doing and putting our own spin on it to form a new idea. An example of where Tesla failed to implement first principles was with their first plant in Fremont, California. The company reasoned by analogy, they needed to make cars, so they bought a car factory, which they would then put their own spin on. That worked out in the early stages, but in the long run, we end up with the abject chaos that is the current day Fremont plant, with production lines in tents and car parts in the parking lot. Luckily, Elon and his team smartened up pretty fast. By 2013, the idea of the Gigafactory was born. Tesla reasoned that if all of their cars run on batteries, and batteries are the most difficult part to source, then they should build a whole factory for the specific purpose of manufacturing their own batteries. Again, starting from the roots. The Gigafactory in Nevada began mass production of 2170 cells in January of 2017. The Tesla Model 3 began first deliveries in July 2017. Tesla kept the horse in front of the cart. That sounds easy, but it's clearly not, because companies like GM have been trying to build electric cars for years, and they're still talking about finishing their battery plant in 2024. That's the cart before the horse, and that's the reason this company can't even deliver 500 electric cars in the first quarter of 2022. Anyway, around the same time that Tesla was building the Model 3 in a tent, Elon Musk hit some kind of epiphany that there has to be a better way to do this. In his mind, Elon imagined a kind of massive alien dreadnought production facility like an inhuman machine that builds other machines in a fully automated process. If all humans just suddenly died, the dreadnought factory would just keep on spitting out cars without us until it ran out of materials to make them with. Elon has said that we can think of Giga Shanghai as kind of version 0.5 of the alien dreadnought idea. If we go back to that video from last summer released by Tesla, it does show a lot of automation with the factory. Everything is in a constant state of motion, and they make use of time-lapse video to speed everything up and give it that appearance of an ant colony or something. But we've now got our first taste of Alien Dreadnought version 1.0, and that is Giga Berlin and Giga Texas. Yes, the last however many minutes was just foreplay, so we could use a gratuitous amount of clips from this Giga Berlin FPV drone video, because it's just so dope. 
But fancy camera work aside, this is a first person view inside the new and improved Alien Dreadnought. Is the process fully automated yet? No. But we can see just how much work these machines are doing and how quickly the vehicle comes together when the manufacturing process itself is created with first principles thinking. The Gigapress scene is a really great example of this. Every other car maker builds their frames by connecting together dozens of smaller parts that are preformed using multiple stamping and casting machines, and then welded together and even glued together in some cases to form one larger piece of the frame. And the reason that everyone does that is because that's just the way that it's always been done. It's the common knowledge. Tesla has reduced this process down to just two giant machines and one human person whose job is, I guess, to poke the molten aluminum with a large stick? Whatever he's doing looks like an interesting way to spend the day. Anyway, the entire rear quarter of the Model Y frame is casted from solid aluminum alloy, and then plucked from the mold by a giant robot arm, which then hands it off to a small army of additional robots who go about assembling these large castings and stampings into a fully formed Model Y body. And this process is happening hundreds of times per day. In a few months from now, it will be thousands of times per day. And Giga Texas dwarfs Giga Berlin. It is gigantic. We haven't even seen that factory line in action yet, but we know that it's going to be at least as impressive, if not more so. Volkswagen CEO Herbert Dice is one of the smartest people in the automotive industry right now, and he's also smart enough to be terrified of Giga Texas. Dice wrote in a LinkedIn post last month, Elon's new factory, he calls it the machine that produces the machine, is impressive. 1.2 kilometers long, 400 meters wide, all under one roof. No logistics from cell production to the final assembly. Once up and running, it will very likely set some new benchmarks. I am so happy that we decided on a new plant for Wolfsburg. Without that, we have no chance to compete. That's the real beauty of Giga Texas. It is everything under one roof. Even Giga Berlin will be producing their battery cells in a separate factory that is still on the same grounds as the vehicle production line, but not in the same building. Giga Texas takes all of the best things from every Tesla factory. The cell manufacturing of Nevada, the massive capacity of Shanghai, the automation of Berlin, and the company headquarters and logistics support of Fremont, and rolls it all together into one monster that is purpose-built from the ground up for building Teslas. Not just building cars, building Tesla cars in the Tesla way, not imitating only innovating, always maximizing for efficiency. That's how you consistently grow your productivity by 50 to 100% year over year in the electric car game. You can't use the tools of the past to build the cars of the future in the same way that you can't use a hammer to fix a laptop. It just doesn't work. So hopefully that's been an informative look into the process behind Tesla's manufacturing and shed some light onto why they flourish while the competition falters. And obviously, comparing Tesla to the American rivals is not much of a fair fight. Tesla compared to Chinese EV makers is a much more even match, but that gets a lot more complicated. Maybe we can get into that someday in the future. If you'd like, let us know below. Also, let me know your predictions in the comment section below. How fast do you think Tesla can ramp Giga Texas and Giga Berlin? Will they beat 1.5 million vehicle deliveries this year? Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.